Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology Level 2 with Fitness Training Solutions, working with our awarding body, Active IQ. Today we're going to look at the structure and the function of the circulatory system, which is the units that are made up for your exam for Anatomy and Physiology and Exercise. Today our learning outcomes for this section are looking at identifying the location of the heart, describe the function of the heart, describe the structure of the heart, describe how blood moves through the four chambers of the heart, describe systemic and pulmonary circulation, describe the structure and functions of blood vessels, the flying blood pressure and identify blood pressure classifications. So the circulatory system. What structures do you think form part of the circulatory system? Now I'll just pause this for a second and come back to me with the answers. Okay, welcome back. So the circulatory system, it comprises the heart, blood, arteries, veins, capillaries. You have a right and left atria. You have a right and left ventricles. You have a pulmonary vein, a pulmonary artery, aorta, and the vena cava. Quick question. Where is the heart located? Now quickly make a note now. Give you five seconds. Okay, hopefully you were right. So the location of the heart, so you're looking at the thoracic or chest cavity, the rib cage, and it should be behind the sternum and just left of the center between the right and left of the lungs, as you can see on the image below. So it's the circulatory system. What do we know about it? What is the function of the heart? Quickly make some notes now, and let's see what you know already. Pause this if you need to. Okay, so the function of the heart. Hopefully you got it right. It's a cardiac muscular pump that pumps blood and helps circulation. It pumps oxygen, blood and nutrients to the body. And it's about the size of a clenched fist, which I think you're all doing right now. So the composition of blood, how, how does blood made up? What is it? Well, we have red, red blood cells, first of all. They help transport oxygen around the body. And then you've got white blood cells that provide immunity to the fight infection. We have platelets. These are fragments of dead blood cells that serve as blood clotting agents. And then we've got plasma. Now, plasma is straw-coloured liquid, which is composed of 91% water and 8.5% solutes. So, a quick question. How does blood flow through the heart? Pull this and then come back to me. Okay, welcome back. So the structure of the heart comprises of two sides. You have the right side and the left side. There are four muscular chambers within the heart. So you've got the upper two chambers, as you can see, which is the atria, which is Latin for large open hall or entrance. And then you have the lower ventricles, which is Latin for the belly. So it's important to understand the Latin words within them as well, because it's going to really help you gauge and remember exactly what the heart is and where they are. So if we look at atria, which is Latin for open hall or entrance, you know that it's coming in. And then when you look at ventricles, it's Latin for belly, so you know it's going to be underneath. Blood always flows from A to V, so the atria to the ventricles. So blood flow in the heart. We've got the supervena cava and the inferior vena cava. We have the left right atrium and the right ventricle. We then have the pulmonary artery, the pulmonary vein, 
the left and right atrium and ventricle. At the top there you can see is where the aorta is. And this is how it works. So we show that again. Blood's pumped in through the right side. So it goes from the right atrium into the right ventricle. Through and down and then out through the pulmonary artery. Blood then comes back in via the primary vein through the left, left atrium into the left ventricle. So show that again. Primary vein, left atrium, left ventricle, and out. Pulmonary and systemic circulation are as follows. So you've got one side which is the pulmonary, which is blood flow between the heart and the lungs. And then you've got systemic, which is blood flow from the heart to all the other parts of the body. Pulmonary circulation is as follows. So pulmonary is oxygenated blood, where systemic is deoxygenated blood. Pulmonary goes from the lungs, systemic goes to the body. You'll find that gaseous exchange takes place in the cells, oxygen is supplied and carbon dioxide is removed via pulmonary, and gas exchanges in the lungs, carbon dioxide is removed and the oxygen is take, taken in via systemic circulation. So those are the important things to remember. So the cardiorespiratory overview. O2. Goes into the heart and back out through the aorta. Do remember what that was. So it's the left atrium. Go back. Left atrium. Right ventricle. And out. And it fills through like that. And CO2 comes back into the heart via the right atrium and right ventricle, and then goes back out into the lungs where gaseous exchange takes place. Just like so. So a quick overview. How is the heart structured? We have two sides, the right and left side, and these four muscular chambers. We have the atria, Latin for open hall or entrance. We have ventricles, Latin for belly, which is the bottom of the heart. Blood vessels flow from A to V, so atrium to ventricles. And it goes You've got the super vena cava and the inferior uh, vena cava. So one superior at the top and inferior at the bottom. We've got the right atrium and the right ventricle. We've got the pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein. And then we've got the left atrium and left ventricle. And at the top there is your aorta. So the oxygen blood flows through via the super vena cava and the inferior vena cava, which is deoxygenated. It goes from the right atrium to the right ventricle, in and out via the pulmonary artery. Oxygenated blood then comes through the pulmonary vein to the left, then down through to the left ventricle, and then out through the aorta. We've already discussed the different type of pulmonary and circulation and um, systemic circulation and how it works. And here again, you can see it within the diagram. Oxygen comes in into the lungs. Gases exchange takes place. As you see on the pulmonary circulation, gas exchange takes place. Oxygen goes in and out around to the body, just like so. Carbon dioxide then goes back into the heart. Gases exchange takes place. So you've got the superior and inferior vena cava or cava. Right atrium. 
right ventricle, and then out through the pulmonary artery. And there it goes again. So circulation. From the lungs, oxygenated blood, pulmonary and veins to the heart, and it goes into the left atrium and the left ventricle. ventricle. The aorta to all parts of the body, via the arteries, arteries and capillaries. Gas exchange takes place in the cells, oxygen is supplied, and carbon dioxide is removed. From the body cells, deoxygenated blood goes back to the heart via the capillaries, venules and veins, the vena cava to the heart from the to the right atrium, to the right ventricle, the pulmonary arteries to the lungs, and then gas exchange takes place again in the lungs. Carbon dioxide is removed and oxygen is taken in. And then that process starts again from the lungs, oxygenated blood, pulmonary vein, to the heart. Question, what different types of blood vessels are there in the body? Quickly pause this and come back to me. Okay, welcome back. So the first thing we have, we've already spoke about it briefly, is arteries. Arteries take blood away, A, away from the heart. They're thick muscular walls and they are under higher pressure. Veins take blood to the heart. Or we say, if we break veins in, it is vein in. So it goes into the heart. They're thin muscular walls and contain non-returning valves. And they work under lower pressure. And then we have the capillaries, the smallest blood vessels, the site of gas exchange, which you need to remember, they're one cell thick to allow the diffusion to take place. So as you can see, we have an artery and the vein right in front of you. The left side is obviously the artery and the right side of the diagram you can see is the vein. And you see the difference in thickness from the smooth muscle cell. So a normal vein, And a varicose vein. So you said varicose veins are, um, you, you some see them on the outer skin, they're a little bit more baggier, um, they're not as streamlined as the normal vein, and you can see how they can be affected. With a normal vein, it's non returning, so the blood's going to bounce back. Um, with a varicose vein, there's a chance, obviously, the blood flow to return. Questions and answers. Venus return. When exercising, the heart rate is increased and a higher volume of blood is being circulated. What do you think may happen if exercise is suddenly stopped? Pause and come back to me with the answer. Okay, welcome back. Move this. We're looking at blood pooling. So we're specifically looking at blood pooling. So veins have thin muscular walls. Blood may pool in the extremities, causing dizziness, fainting. If you needed help to assist to return, return to the heart. So it's important to keep your legs moving and to cool down thoroughly. What may help return blood in the veins and the heart? So you could cool down. Walk a lot slower. Venus return itself. The body has several methods to assist the return of blood to the heart. So what are they? Gravity. The right atrium. Action of the muscles. Non-returning valves. The diaphragm. Peristalsis. Questions like, what is blood pressure? So what do you know about blood pressure? Quickly jot it down and tell me what you think. Okay, welcome back. So taken from Bupa in 2002, blood pressure was defined as a measure of the force that blood 
applies to the walls of the arteries as it flows through them. So systolic pressure exerted when the heart is contracting, systolic pressure, so diastolic pressure exerted when the heart is relaxed between beats. We have total peripheral resistance, which is the resistance of vessels offered to blood flow. And there's a small calculation there to work out blood flow. So what are we looking for though? Well, low blood pressure would be a systolic pressure, which is usually at the top of your reading. So if you have a mechanical machine that does your blood pressure, the top reading is usually systolic and the bottom reading is usually diastolic. So a low blood pressure reading would be anything under 100 um, over 60 and below. Optimal pressure, so some optimal pressure, 120 over 80 is something you're looking for. Anything above that is going to be higher blood pressure. And then it's anything higher than um, 140 to 90 is stage one hypertension. And it goes all the way up to hypertension stage three. So quick task, what effect do you think exercise will have on the circulatory system? Pause this tape again and come back to me. Okay, welcome back. So short term effects, what did we come up with? Hopefully we come up with the heart rate will increase, stroke volume increases, cardiac output increases, and systolic blood pressure increases. Capillaries will dilate. The long-term effect, stronger heart muscles, lower resting heart rate, improved stroke volume and cardiac output, lower working heart rate for, for some effort. Size and number of the mitochondria increases, capillaries in the muscles, optimal blood pressure. So thank you for joining me. Hopefully, you can now identify the location of the heart, describe the functions of the heart, describe the structure of the heart, describe how blood moves through the four chambers of the heart, describe systemic and pulmonary circulation. You should be able to describe structures and functions of blood vessels. You should be able to define blood pressure and identify pressure classifications. If you can't do any of them, go back to the beginning, have a look through, and really get a good understanding of it. Maybe use a friend or relative and explain to them the structure of the heart so that you can then talk about it without the needs of the slides and the book and the manual. This will help give you a real in-depth knowledge of the heart, and it will really help you with your learning. Most importantly, try to learn those Latin names as well because they'll help you remember the chambers. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Ben from Fitness Training Solutions and I will see you next time.